Hello and welcome to Too Many Tabs. It's a podcast where a husband and wife perform for daddy. Also, they do research on topics sometimes. If you are not watching on YouTube or the Patreon video, you are missing out right now. I don't know what you're talking about. In this podcast, a husband and wife sit across from each other at a table. What do they eat? Who knows? It's definitely not dead parrots. Anyway... It's time to start the show. I hope you enjoy yourself. Daddy would love it. Too many frauds and too many scammers that we wish weren't real. Too many cons and too many spammers and we're starting to feel like we got too many tabs open. It's too many tabs. Remember to smile. Let's go. I know how to smile today. I bet you do. I have a big smile. How are you today? (laughs) Are you going to talk with the, what is it? Uh, the new, not the New England accent. The Mid Atlantic. Mid Atlantic accent. The whole ah, time. see, I'm here to talk a little bit about the Betty Davis, <laughs> part two of our trilogy. That's true. We are continuing our journey yes. into the lore and history and incredible life of one Betty Davis. Yes, and I am here uh, to give. I just finished watching Whatever Happened to Baby Jane. Yes, which is a big part of today's episode. Yes. Um, and so I wanted to cosplay mm-hmm. as Chapel Roan. Nope. Okay. No. I'm, 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 I am Baby Jane. Yeah. Oh, you are? You are? I am Baby Jane. Oh, okay. Okay? <laughs> I send, I write letters to Daddy in Heaven. Okay. Okay? How, okay. How's I going really for enjoyed you? watching that movie. You it did. was a very good movie. We'll get into it. It wasn't a movie. It was a film. It was a film. It was a, fi- it was a feature length picture. Yes. It was one of them pictures. We yeah, we thought we were gonna watch it. Um, fun fact: uh, Monday, Monday night. Yep. Monday night we had planned to watch it, and then we lost power. And then what? Yep. Mm-hmm. And then Tuesday we got power back, and we're like, okay, cool, we'll watch it. And then we lost power again. Yeah. And then we didn't have power for thirty six hours, and we are now recording this uh, Friday, July nineteenth. Mm-hmm. Um, after staying at my parents' house for two straight nights. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, love them. They're the best. Anyway, they're amazing. They're the best. We're definitely, there's definitely no stress there. Uh, beyond that, uh, no, they were great. Uh, and and beyond that, we're now just trying to get back into the thick of things. I'm recording this. By the time you hear this, I will have already performed in, performed in San Diego. Mm-hmm. I will make that clear. I will already have been on the stage. Uh, but I am getting uh, massive amounts of messages from the airlines about the uh, huge infrastructure failure that has just happened that is stranding planes all across the world right now. I'm obsessed with you talking about infrastructure with the way that you look right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> I look like someone who knows their infrastructure, obviously. Um, but I just, I, I, it's been since the last time I recorded, I had returned mm-hmm. from Austin, Texas after being stranded at the airport there. Uh, but I want to say thank you to everyone who came out to Austin. It was a great show. Yep. Uh, we had a big uh, turnout. It was awesome. Satoyo was great. Yeah. The host was great. The crowd, uh, everyone at Cap City working there was awesome. Well, I'm excited to get to San Diego for Mike Drop Mania. And uh, we have a new show announcement. Okay. Just added in. Yep. As everybody knows, August 2nd, I'm going to be in Atlantic City. I'm going to be down there uh, making sure that my face stays just exactly this tan. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then September 14th, Jersey City, right across the street from New York City. <laughs> I'll be in but Jersey City. It's not New York. Don't ever say it's New York. It's not New People York. People will fist fight you. It's Jersey City. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a small theater. Uh, all the information is uh, actually it's not even a theater. I think it's just more like a restaurant place, but it's 65 seater. Uh, we got one show so far. If that show sells, we're going to do two. Uh, we're really excited for it. So that's September 14th. You can go to the link in the show notes to find out more information. That takes you over to my link tree and all that other fun stuff. Mrs. P, mm-hmm. anything else? Before we get into, I just saw my own reflection. You look great. I look amazing. I Listen, here's what I have to say. If you have questions about the beautiful look, I can leave in the show notes. Oh, what do we got there? We got about face mm-hmm. eyeshadow covering your whole face liquid eyeshadow. Yes. That's Halsey's brand. Halsey's. In case you didn't know this that. is Halsey's liquid eyeshadow. Yeah, all over your face. Not, um, we are not sponsored by them. No, they're not going to after they see this. No. And then the eyeliner, that's Natasha Denona on eyeliner. Yeah. And and Trixie Mattel's black glitter eyeshadow yes. over the eyebrow. And tell everyone how how I was very brave when you it came so to mascara. Brave. It, you were so brave about I, the mascara. And we eyeliner. didn't have to sing the song at all. <laughs> didn't. 
Some people uh, are really afraid of things near their eyes. Some people don't like getting poked in the eyes yeah. because they saw that one Dolly movie when they were too young mm-hmm. where they start uh, cutting into eyeballs and stuff like that. Okay, well, And I like that. Okay. And it's also like, I do love you, but yeah. we've had a very stressful week. <laughs> we've had such a crazy week. We, not only did we lose power, well, let's, just, let's just lay this out in the on. We lost power Monday at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to pick up my car because it was finally repaired. It got hit by a deer on your way home from the Rochester show. From Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. From the Buffalo show. Uh, When I picked up the car, the car battery died while we were at the pediatrician. pediatrician. Because the baby woke up with an infection. Oh Yeah, with an eye infection. So So it's like, it hasn't stopped. We woke up Monday and we just got home yesterday. Yeah. Physically, emotionally, spiritually. Yeah, and (laughs) and just a reminder, I got, I just gotten home from Austin. (laughs) So I was like uh, yeah so, so anyway he was really brave about the mascara yes he didn't uh whine or cry or shake or yeah. hold me hold my hand like we were on a scary roller coaster not at all <laughs> and i didn't yell not once did i did i yell how does jd vance do this every day <laughs> you did get mad at me because i was like i want the matt gates eyebrows and i said no you said no we have to do betty davis exactly eyebrows. this isn't uh that episode um so anyway uh, I think we're ready to start the show. Of course. Um, I think we've done uh, we've we've done enough. Okay, then let's get going. Okay, so we're gonna take a quick break. If you don't like to hear uh, a random commercial that has been picked by Acast, uh, you can always join us on our Patreon, Patreon.com/slash Pearlmania500 or Pearlmania500.net. Beyond that, let's get part two of the Betty Davis trilogy on the way. And we're back. We're Hi. here. It's funny that the red lipstick blends into your beard so much. You it's can't really tell crazy. you're wearing red lipstick. <laughs> it's wild. And this is a bright red lipstick. I am terrible. Like, also, th- Natasha Denona, you are like very bougie right now. Like, I, you don't know that you're I bougie, no but you're bougie. Yeah, much like the If shampoos. you ever found out how much money I spend on makeup, you're going to be real mad. Okay. So let's get back to Bay Davis. We left off um, and we were talking about the canteen. Right, the, the Hollywood Canteen, the World War II, the Hollywood Canteen, yes. incredible success. Yes, um, and how she helped all the troops. Helped all the troops. Betty Davis loves a troop. Loves it. Very patriotic. Okay, very you got to know that about her. She's yep. patriotic. Um, so she, during the same time in 1942, she gets offered this movie called Now Voyager. Now, comma Voyager. Okay. And uh, she doesn't love the script. She thinks no. the script is kind of bullshit, right? Yeah. And she's very picky about scripts. You gotta know this. Cause, yeah, she's yeah. always looking for like these intense characters. She always wants to like chew up the scenery. Mm-hmm. And this isn't that. And so she's like, I don't know. I'm going to pass on this. I don't know if I could like anyone who likes to like chew up the scenery. Oh, really? I don't feel like that's an actor that I would enjoy. <laughs> okay. I feel like it's the opposite of my general personality. Oh, for sure. I yeah. can see how you would think that. Yeah. <laughs> So um, her dear friend and a producer, Hal Wallace, suggested to her that um, female audiences really needed a romantic drama to distract them from the reality of their lives. Okay. And so it was her patriotic duty for the women of America to make this film. This is during the war. Yeah, this is 1942. 1942. Okay. Okay. So it's your patriotic duty to make this film. To make, okay. This yeah. is the same way I want to. Uh, after for our younger listeners, uh, I need you guys to know that after 9-11, everyone went insane. Mm-hmm. And one of the funniest articles I ever read was an article that about because Fellowship of the Ring, the first Lord of the Rings movie, had came out. Yeah. And they were like, this is exactly what we need to distract ourselves from the horrors of 9-11. And I remember reading this and being like, oh, boy, you just talked me out of Lord of the Rings. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, but that's the same thing. It's just we, we the, the, the gals. The gals need this. The right gals now. need this. They miss their Johnnies. They need a romance. They miss their so, Johnnies in the field. It was her patriotic duty, and so she accepts that she's going to do the script for the women of America. Okay, okay. now Voyager. Now Voyager. Okay. Um, film reviewers loved her. Uh, everybody loved her in yeah. the movie. Uh, the plot. Maybe not so much. Yeah. One of the reviews said, Betty Davis brought a dignity not fully warranted by the script. End <laughs> quote. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. All right. Yeah. Now, the movie Now Voyager is considered one of her most iconic roles. Really? Yeah. So. I did not watch that one. Uh. Yep. Nope. Nope. Would have done different makeup. No, you wouldn't have. <laughs> so. Uh, okay, this was the same year 
that Joan Crawford made her move to Warner Brothers. So this whole time, Joan Crawford uh, was at the rival studio, MGM. Okay. And so she comes over to Warner Brothers, where Betty Davis is. So MGM now is Amazon, just so everyone knows. <laughs> Amazon owns MGM. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and Warner Brothers is Warner Brothers Discovery. So, so basically, she went from uh, working for Jeff Bezos to working for David Zasloff. Great. Yep. Um, and when she heads over to Warner Brothers, she demands the dressing room adjacent to Betty Davis, mm. who had been at Warner Brothers for over a decade. Okay. So this is a power move, right? Yeah. Like your dressing room is based on seniority, who gets the bigger, the best, all that stuff. So Joan Davis basically kicking in the door. And Joan Crawford. Like, sorry. Joan Crawford kicking in the door and is like... I want to be on equal legs mm. as Betty Davis. Mm. And this is an affront to Betty Davis. I can only imagine, because you know how now all modern movie posters are terrible? Yeah. And it's because of this type of stuff? Mm-hmm. I can only imagine what their movie poster fights would have been like. Oh if they're already fighting over like dressing room position. Because yeah. that's the thing is like there's like certain things in writers these days with movies. Because you'll look and it'll be like big name like Tom Cruise, Jim Carrey at the top. It'll say Tom Cruise, Jim yeah. Carrey. But then like Jim Carrey has a writer that he always has to be on the furthest left of the poster. Like there's like positioning they have to go through. There's all this different stuff because again, psychotic people uh-huh. in the movie industry is like if yeah. I'm not dead center. That's why, like, all of the Avengers posters look crazy. Yeah. They all look insane because they're like, everyone's head has to be in this very specific location. I just picture the graphic graphic designer with his his PowerPoint list of, like, okay, I got to get this person on the upper left-hand corner with the right side. And then, so they're, like, doing a a puzzle piece with the characters. Robert Downey Jr.'s head has to be exactly 3.2 centimeters wide, no larger, no less. Um, So And Chris Pratt has to look Christian. Oh, God, gross. Worst, Worst Chris. Chris. Uh, Crawford reportedly sent numerous gifts and flowers next door in a bid to win Davis over, mm. all of which were returned. Oh. So she sent many, many things. Yeah. To be like, oh, uh, hi, I'm here. Let's be friendly. And every single time, Betty Davis was like, no, thank you. You know what's funny? Mm. I read a thing a long time ago. Ben Franklin said, if you want someone on your side, don't give them something. Ask them for something. Yeah. Ask them for help. Because then it puts them in the dominant role. Yeah. Uh, he was an insane person. Who? Ben Franklin. You're selling, trying to tell me my boy Benny Frank. Yep. My boy Benny Frank. He had sexy calves. Uh-huh. And he got a lot of a lot of French diseases. Because he was having a good time. And what Great else time. did he do? Helped start Philadelphia. <laughs> That's our boy. Okay. Um, okay. August 1943. Uh, Betty Davis's husband, Arthur Farnsworth, remember the innkeeper? Oh, yes. Uh, collapsed while walking along a Hollywood street, and he died two days later. Because they didn't have uh, tree cover. <laughs> You've been going on about this. I'm, I know. I'm sure that's the, the reason. An autopsy revealed that his fall had been caused by a skull fracture he had suffered two weeks earlier, oh. having accidentally fallen down a flight of stairs. Oh. A finding of accidental death was reached. Okay, so it wasn't heat stroke. Nope. It was that he had fallen down a flight of stairs. And then he went, I'm fine. It's fine. I'm fine. And then he just... You should see a doctor. I'm fine. I'm just going to be the senator from Pennsylvania. Um, so Betty Davis is highly distraught. Okay. She's deeply yeah. upset by this. Yeah. Her innkeeper Obviously. husband died. Um, and so she had been uh, signed on to do this new movie called Mr. Skeffington. Mr. Skeffington? Such a name. Yeah. yeah. I thought it said Mr. Skellington, but it's two Fs. Skeffington. Yeah. Um, in 1944. Um, and she was going to withdraw, withdraw from the film because she was so upset about her husband's death. But they were like the troops. But Jack Warner persuaded her to continue um, because he kind of was like, this is your opportunity to use all that emotion and direct it into the, the, the storyline and the gross. whole thing, right? Gross. So... Yeah, work through your pain. So... Now, you have to remember that she had a reputation for being very demanding and forthright on set. People knew this about her. Yeah. She was a a snap your fingers kind of get me what I need. Let's go. Very demanding. But her uh, her behavior during the filming of Mr. Skeffington was said to be erratic and completely out of character. She alienated colleagues by refusing to film certain scenes and insisted on some sets being rebuilt overnight. She also kept improvising dialogue which forced constant rewrites of the scenes at her whim so she was like hell on wheels yeah right like just her husband died yeah and she uh 
Davis? Like, like he, she shouldn't yeah. have been. She shouldn't have been on set. She no. should have had the time to grieve. Yeah. She should have had the time to go through the trauma, all those different things. And instead, they were like work. And so she took control of the only thing in her life she could feel like she could take control of, which is a Hollywood set. Yeah. Like people do this all the time, like at job places, and it's always like so telling. Yeah. There's whenever you meet somebody who like has to have control of the workplace, just look at what their home life is like. And typically they don't have control of it. There's yeah. something that's crazy about it. And I see this a lot of times. This also happens a lot on social media when people mm. are like really like, oh, you need to be the, you know, they'll, they'll scream at people. You need to be doing this. This needs to happen. All these different things. And then you scroll through that person's personal social media and you're yeah. like, oh man, it's not going well for you. Yeah. Like you're, you're trying to get control somewhere else because you have no control there. Exactly. And that's exactly what's happening to her. Um, Betty Davis later explained her actions with an observation, quote, when I was most unhappy, I lashed out rather than whining, unquote. Some reviewers criticized Davis for the excess of this performance. This is a quote from one of the reviews. She demonstrates the horrors of egocentricity on a marathonic scale. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so... I lashed out at other people. So despite the reviews, Mr. Skeffington was another box office hit, a big slam dunk, and earned Davis another Academy Award nomination. Of course. So even though she- uh, Is hell on wheels. Hell on wheels. She- you know, made an incredible movie. To be fair, also, this is during a time where, like, it would be two years before anyone in New York would even know she was being this way. Yeah. Because it's not like today where you find out about a movie and they're like, oh, they had to do 37. I remember, like, when the the, the Han Solo Star Wars movie was coming yeah. out. Like, all the rumors, they had to do all these reshoots. They always, it's terrible. Everyone involved hates it. Blah, blah, blah. Everyone's mean. They're all fighting. The director yeah. walked off the set. Then I saw it. I was like, it's fine. Yeah. It was fine. Like, it was fine. I had no... It was a movie. No notes. No, like none. And then they'd be like, oh, it was all these terrible things. But like back then, like you would only know that if you were in Hollywood and you read like so certain in newspapers. In Lord of the Rings, what happened when he kicked the helmet? <sighs> okay. So keep going with your goddamn story. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, in this, actually in this uh, moment, she actually establishes an Oscar milestone. She becomes the first person to earn five consecutive Academy Award nominations for acting. So every year from 1938 to 1942, she is nominated. Yeah. And it's obviously a big milestone. Yeah. Um, in 1945, uh, Betty Davis marries an artist named William Gant Sherry. This is her third husband, right? Her third husband. All right. Who also worked as a masseur. A massage therapist. Oh. Um, she had been drawn to him because he claimed he had never heard of her. And so he was not intimidated by her. Oh. So I don't know if that's real or if it was like uh, the the pickup artist stuff. Yeah. Where he's like, I don't know who you are. But There's like, no way he didn't know who Betty Davis was. How did you was? not know? Shut up. Yeah. A massage artist. More like yeah. con artist. Yeah. Um, <laughs> he's massaging her ego. Whoa. Uh, Along Betty with Dave- other things. Whoa. Betty Davis was offered the title role in a movie called Mildred Pierce. I've heard of that. Yeah, she passed on it. Oh! So, <laughs> but here's the thing. Mildred Pierce is an iconic film. It did happen. Yeah, no, I know. I've and heard of this movie. I didn't, like, I didn't know. She didn't like it. She said, I, I don't want it, blah, blah, blah. And there were some gossips that maybe people were in her ear telling her it wasn't the right role for her. Maybe yeah. like people were like kind of like just influencing her to be like, maybe you don't want this role. Yeah. Those people potentially allegedly were friends or let's say the little birds of one Joan Crawford who really, really wanted this role. Oh. And so at the studio, everything went to Betty Davis first. She's yeah, yeah, the yeah. star. And then after that, it would go to Joan Crawford to see if she liked it. Right. Gotcha. So Joan Crawford was gnawing at the bit hoping she turned this down because she wanted Mildred Pierce. Yeah. And so sure as shit, she snatched up the role immediately and Joan Crawford went on to win her first and only Oscar um, for Mildred Pierce. Okay. Okay. And fun fact about this, when she won her Oscar, she did not attend the Oscars. She accepted the award in bed. So they had the full camera crew in her bedroom. She's in like this gorgeous silk uh, dressing gown. She's in bed, full hair and makeup, big satin pillows behind her, the beautiful satin sheets, her big bed. And like the reporters are in the room too. Like there's a full Hollywood setup in her bedroom. Yeah. Because she said, "Ah, I'm sick. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sick. And 
I'm much too tired to Pardon go down. Me. Um, oh. Allegedly, yeah. she had, there's like different reports, but like one is that she was afraid of losing. So she didn't want to be in the room in case she lost. And that way anyone would be able to take a picture of her with an upset lose. face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she's like, I don't want any bad press. Yeah. So in case I don't win, I'm not going. I'm sick. But if I win, we're here. All eyes on me. All eyes on me, baby. <laughs> And so she's the first and I believe only person that's ever gotten an Oscar in her bed with a full film set. And like, and the reporters are in there with their microphones. Hey, how does it feel? Joan, how does it feel to win? How does it feel, Miss, Miss Crawford? <laughs> Meanwhile, everyone else is at the, like, at the theater. Yeah. Just said like, Joan Crawford. All right, moving on. Yeah, moving on. <laughs> There's no live streaming. Yeah. They weren't watching this happen. No, they couldn't do live via satellite. We're going to go live via satellite to Miss Crawford or we have, a, we have a pre-tape, pre-rolled tape. Miss Crawford made while on the set of Jurassic Park 7. <laughs> Geriatric Harder. Leave Chris, what's his name out of it? Chris Pratt. That one, the shitty one. Yeah, the Dinosaur worst Chris. One. Yeah. yeah. So, I loved it in the movie when he was like, shh, and the raptors listened. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um, Good writing. In 1947, at the age of 39, Betty Davis gave birth to a daughter, Barbara Davis Sherry. Okay. Okay. She would go by the nickname BD. First okay. two initials, BD. BD Wong. BD Sherry. Okay. Um, and that's with her third husband. Yes, with okay. her third husband, she has her first child. Yep. And she later wrote in her memoir that she became so absorbed in motherhood that she considered ending her career. Oh wow. She was like, I love being a mom. Yeah. Super into it. And so she's thinking, I'm gonna maybe take a little take a little break yeah but her career is actually not doing well at this time she has a few flop films that come out mm -hmm. so some people are like did she really like say she wanted to be a stay-at-home mom and give it all up or was she just having a bad time so she was like playing it off yeah, just yeah. in case she needed a quick exit you know yeah um joan crawford would take another lead role originally intended for davis in a crime drama called possessed oh and win another oscar nomination for it Ooh. So now like Joan Crawford's scooping these films yeah. and Davis is flopping. Okay. Yeah. Not great. What's crazy too is also it's like the Oscars didn't used to matter. Yeah. And like Betty kind of made them matter. Yeah. And so now it's like they're tied. Like now they have to get Oscars. Exactly. They have to get nominations. If they don't, they're failures. Even though everyone still loves them. Yeah. That's the thing. They're both still extremely popular. Yeah. But they had now they're like this, they have this existential fight about this cute little butt statue. Yeah, this little butt statue. Um, real, so, real, real quick, oh, at her last episode, because we forget almost every week when we pick those oh, words. Yeah, sure. So when people comment and we're like, Oscar got a little butt. Yeah. <laughs> we're like, that's so funny. Like, and yeah. we're like, we totally forgot that yeah. we told you to write mm -hmm. that at yeah. the end of the episode. Listen, scrambled eggs doesn't begin to describe my brain right no. now. No, if, if it's not written down, it's not real for it's, us. We, I have lost track of most things in life. Yeah. Um. So, what was I thinking? Okay. So she gets this Oscar nom. Yeah. And Joan Crawford. Joan Crawford, and you know it's in the news. And reporters are asking Betty Davis about it, and Betty Davis was quoted as saying about Mrs. Crawford, "Quote, Miss Crawford is a movie star, and I am an actress." Oh. End quote. Damn. That's all she had to say about her getting these noms. Woo! Um, Woo! The shade. Listen, despite the lackluster box, box office receipts from her more recent films, in 1949, she negotiated a four film contract with Warner Brothers that paid her $10,285 per week, making her the highest paid woman in the United States. Betty Davis? Yes. That's incredible. Yeah. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. She was getting 10 grand a week? 10 grand a week for, in, four, for in films. In 1949 money. Yeah, in 1949 money. That's wild. <laughs> that's insane amount of money. That's in. That's crazy. Um, but, however, Jack Warner, within this contract negotiation, still refused to allow her script approval. Yep. Um, and cast her in a movie called Beyond the Forest, which she didn't want to do. She hated the script. The word loathed was used, the script. Yeah. And she begged Jack Warner to recast the role, but he refused. And after the film was completed, her request to be released from her contract was honored. So this is the first time she is going to leave oh. Warner Brothers. Okay. So she. This is after like almost 
like 15 years, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, for a while. Um, when the movie came out, the reviews were scathing. Because, yeah, this is a horrible film, and she knew it was bad. Yeah. And, you know, she she tries her best, even in the film she doesn't like. Yeah. Bad. Dorothy Manners, who wrote for the Los Angeles Examiner, described the film as, quote, an unfortunate finale to a brilliant career. God damn. <laughs> From Dorothy Manners? Dorothy Manners What a name. Um, that's got to be that's gotta be a pen name. So, yeah, there are pen names. Yeah. Uh, Hedda Hopper. Wrote, remember Hedda Hopper from the show yeah, with the hats? Him, yeah, with the hats. Real lady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A real woman. I could do an entire episode on Hedda Hopper. Yeah. Once I started like reading, so I was like, oh, what's her real name? Because Hedda Hopper couldn't be a real name. No. She is a, a, a terrible character in history. She was um, a big, I want to, I don't want to say proponent. Um, she was an active member of the House of Un-American Activities Committee yeah. in Hollywood. Yeah. She was big into that. It's like her and John Wayne, right? Yeah, she was. And she, as a reporter, she yeah. was always getting the details to report. Yeah. Um, so Hedda Hopper wrote about this movie and Betty Davis in it. Quote, if Betty had deliberately set out to wreck her career, comma, she could have picked a more appropriate vehicle. Wow. <laughs> she didn't get the pick. She didn't get the pick. She didn't get the pick. But people didn't know that. I mean, Hedda Hopper probably knew that. Hedda Hopper definitely knew. Yeah. Um, do you want to take a quick break before we get into the, the 1950s? Yeah, let's take a quick little break. And when we come back, we'll get into the 1950s. And then we're going to get into this. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're getting into it. We'll be right back. And by that, you mean the looks. The looks. Some people are listening. The looks. He's serving looks. Serving face. Oh, I'm a mew. Yep. Uh, say prune. Prune. Yeah, that's what the Olsen twins used to do. Prune. That's prune. how they would get that little face. Prune. Prune. <laughs> okay, let's okay. take a break. All right, we'll take a break. When we come back, we will have more on the fabulous Betty Davis. <laughs> And we have to save time anywhere we can. With the podcast, with the tour, with the baby, we have a new friend and a new partner, which is Factor. And Factor is such a godsend for us. They're no mess, no prep meals. Take just two minutes. Throw one in a skillet or in the microwave and you're all set. They have dozens of different meals to choose from each week. And they have meals for vegans, vegetarians, people counting calories, Everybody and gluten free too, and gluten free. But I also I ordered all of the like high protein meals because yeah. after the pregnancy I had to really up my protein intake because uh, you have a lot of muscle and bone density loss, mm -hmm. and so you got to eat high protein. And yep. so that's what I ordered. And my favorite one so far is the jalapeno lime cheddar chicken. Yeah, and we actually had them while well, we had, didn't have power. They showed up lifesaver right as we got home. Right when they we had power again, yeah. it was waiting for us on the front door. That way we had meals. Ready for that evening Thank and God. it's been really great and we can cut down on meal prep for yeah. it so if you want even more factor add on snacks smoothies or midday bites so you'll always be prepared no matter what life throws at you head to factormeals.com slash too many 50 and use code too many 50 to get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month that's code t-o-o-m-a-n-y-5-0 at factormeals.com slash too many 50 and get 50 percent off your first box plus 20 percent off your next month while your subscription is active and there we go we did it we did it <laughs> okay back to betty davis <laughs> back to betty davis yeah um okay so she starts a freelance career basically at this point yeah she's she's on her own but she's not right um in 1951, she films a movie called The Story of a Divorce. Yeah. Um, she played a Broadway star, and Davis read the script and described it as the best she's ever read and accepted the role immediately. Within days, she joined the cast in San Francisco and began filming. During production, she established what became a lifelong friendship with her co-star, Ann Baxter, and a romantic relationship with her leading man, Gary Merrill, with le which led to marriage. Mm. Okay, so we're falling in love again. We're getting yeah. married again. This during a movie about divorce. This is a fourth husband. Fourth husband. Yeah. Gotcha. So the story of divorce, which earned her another Oscar nomination mm. and a nomination at the Cannes Film Festival okay. for Best Actress, um, she won 
the Best Actress at the Cannes Film Festival and the New York Film Critics Circle Award as well that year. Okay. She also received the San Francisco Film Critics Circle Award for Best Actress, having been named by them the worst actress in 1949 for Beyond the Forest. Oh, okay. So, so she basically won a Razzie and an Oscar, kind yeah. of, without winning the Oscar. Yeah, exactly. They were like, in 1949, Beyond the Forest, they were like, this is the worst thing we've ever seen. And then yeah. only a couple of years later, they were like, this is the best we've ever seen. It's pretty amazing. good. Thank you so okay. much. Um, on July 3rd, 1950, Davis's divorce from William Sherry was finalized. Mm-hmm. And on July 28th, she married Gary Merrill. That's so within turnaround. the month, within the month. That's a quick turnaround. He would be her fourth and final husband. Okay. I like that. I like that. Final okay. husband. <laughs> final husband. Yeah. Um, and with Sherry's consent, Merrill adopted BD. Okay. The daughter. Um, and in nineteen in 1951, Davis and Merrill adopted a five-day-old baby girl they named Mar- Margot Mosher Merrill. Okay. So they really want to start a bigger family. Yeah. Like we said, um, Betty Davis loves being a mom. Yeah. So she's like, I want to adopt another child. Yeah, but it, at this point, she's like 41. So yeah. it's like right on the edge right there. Um, in 1952, they adopt another baby, a baby boy named Michael. Okay. Um, Davis and Merrill live with their three children on a huge estate in Maine on the coast. Okay. So they have a beautiful coastal house in Maine. Yeah. Um, she's very not of Hollywood at this time. Yeah. And that like has to be said is like, she's very East Coast. Yeah. She's very like, She's a gal from Maine. She's from the like that area. Well, she's from Massachusetts. Massachusetts, you know. What yeah, I mean? yeah. So she's got that New England flavor to yeah. her, and then she's like, I want to raise she, my kids the way I was raised. Exactly. Type she of doesn't. Feel. She doesn't want to raise her kids in L.A. and Hollywood and the whole thing. I get that. <laughs> I get that. I understand that. Um, so uh, the romantic drama, this movie called The Star. Okay. okay. Hold on. I need to restart myself. Okay. Restart. This is incredible. Reset. So there's this movie Take a called breath. The Star, and it's written. By one of Joan Crawford's longtime friends. Okay. Called uh, her name was Catherine Albert. Okay. And so she writes this romantic drama, The Star, and it's actually a movie in retaliation against Joan Crawford because they had a falling out after their long-standing friendship. So she wrote this movie with a wink, wink, nudge, nudge oh. about Joan Crawford. Okay. And she called Betty Davis and cast Davis as the lead role. As a washed up actress clinging desperately to her fading star power, a thinly veiled, deeply unflattering depiction of Joan Crawford and Davis, of course, signed on. She's like, this is for Mildred Pierce, bitch. <laughs> she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she does it. And uh, it, it was it was it didn't get her rave review. She didn't win anything for she it. She wasn't doing but it for that. People loved it. She wasn't doing it for the she review. She wasn't doing it for the She wasn't doing she it, was it, doing it for the love of the game. Yeah. <laughs> This, this is for love of the game. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, she was like, "I'll never forget that you." Wait, what were we calling him? Fresh Adon. With the oh yeah, she's I never forgot. gonna let go. I completely forgot about him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah the French guy. The French boyfriend. <laughs> he doesn't view you as a woman. Yeah. An actor. <laughs> that um, was. Yeah. So she's not letting that go. No. You're not letting that go. I had French Adon. French Adon. Um, in 1952. Margot, that was the daughter they adopted, adopted. Yep. Uh, was diagnosed as severely brain damaged due to an injury she sustained during or shortly after birth. And she was placed in an institution around the age of three. Mm. Um, Davis and Merrill began arguing frequently and her daughter, B.D., later recalled episodes of alcohol abuse and domestic violence. Mm. I didn't really get into it because it's like it's it's woven in here. But uh, Betty Davis is a heavy drinker. We right? mentioned it in the first episode. Yeah, okay. But it's she's a heavy drinker. There's always been a lot of alcohol around. Um, Betty Davis never in her lifetime says that she's an alcoholic or admits yeah. she has a problem with alcohol in any way. Yeah. People around have written that, you know, she liked to get a little drunk. Uh, she Her daughter writes that there was alcohol abuse yeah. and domestic violence. Yeah. Um, which we'll talk about in later episodes. But uh, so like this is all happening now after this Margot diagnosis and they, you know, they put her in this institution and, and it's literally like the best possible place. Yeah. That time of because like they're so horrible back then um, for that period of time. I mean, um, so 1961, we're in the 60s. Okay. Okay. We're going to that was kind of the 50s were a lull. 
for Betty Davis. The role. Yeah. She's she has the family. She made a spite movie. She made a spite <laughs> film. She's living with her kids. She's, yeah, she's having a Maine. lot of home stuff going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's not she's not doing well in the box office. And she's also pretending that she just wants to be home. And also she's an older woman. Yeah. Uh, for Hollywood. For yeah, Hollywood. She's, she's, like, like, she's like she's pushing fifty now. Yeah, she's in her fifty. She's early fifties, I think, yeah. at this point. Yeah. So again, that's you know dead in Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even old. That's yeah. just dead. So uh, there's this movie called whatever happened to baby jane that comes out in 1962 which starred joan crawford and betty davis yes it did um i just watched it now joan crawford showed interest in the script and she is the one that reached out to davis for the part of jane because she felt that she would be the perfect person to play this Kind of unlikable and crazy role. It's a lunatic a role. A luna- lunatic it's role. It's fucking crazy. <laughs> so I just watched it an hour ago. It's yeah. a wild movie. Like it's here's the thing. Oh, before we get into it, let me just tell my quick review of the Go movie. Go ahead. Is a lot of times when you're watching a movie, especially a movie that's from uh, I want to say like pre- like the pre sixties, like pre. Early 60s mm-hmm. and even earlier. Sometimes they're difficult to watch now as a modern viewer because pacing has changed, camera angles have changed, the fact that it's in black and white. Even though they're making color movies at the time, when they're really pushing out certain types of films, they're like they make it. They made it in black and white because it would be cheaper. Yeah, all these different things. This movie, like I didn't have that problem watching it. It was very well shot. It was very well paced. It is a little bit longer. It's like two hours and ten minutes. Yeah, didn't feel it. It felt like a ninety minute movie. Um, the only difference is now today the, the movie starts in 1917 and then jumps to 1935 and then does one more jump and it just says yesterday. And I was like, <laughs> iconic. I love that. Um, but one thing is that opening of being like, oh, we're going to start at their childhood and work our way up. Yeah. That was, is not how they would do it today. Now it would be revealed through weird flashbacks and stuff like that. Um, so even having that sort of linear progression is old. That's yeah. a very old way of telling a story. And it was great. Yeah. And I, I will say, um, this was the joke I couldn't tell you while I was watching. Oh it. yeah. Um, it is the story of Jojo Siwa. <laughs> Whatever happened to no. Baby Jane is oh the story, is the future story of Jojo Siwa. Come as a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Because, no, so it's about this child actress who's play, Betty Davis is. Yeah. A child actress who was big on vaudeville. Spoiler alert yeah. from 1962. Yeah. So in 1917, <laughs> this little girl is, she is the toast of vaudeville. She's doing live shows all across the country with her and her daddy. Mm-hmm. And she would sing these songs about writing letters to her daddy in heaven and all this different stuff. Even though he's alive. Yeah. But they have, there's two daughters. There's Jane mm-hmm. and there's Blanche. Joan Crawford plays Jan- Blanche. Uh, Betty Davis plays Baby Jane. Mm-hmm. Baby Jane and Blanche in 1935, they're both Hollywood actresses. Blanche is the one who everyone loves. She is this amazing actress who has all this talent, but has all of her contracts written so that baby Jane has to, every time Blanche makes a film, baby Jane has to get her own film. Yeah. And the the studios keep trying everything because baby Jane sucks on film. Yeah. She's not good. She is, uh, she's drunk. She's fucking weird. Yeah. All this different shit. She doesn't, isn't doing well. And then this thing happens where there's a car accident and Blanche ends up in a wheelchair and baby Jane has to take care of her for the next 30 years. Yeah. And that's kind of where we end up in that. That what was that one movie. Um, the Stephen King movie where the writer is getting his legs broken. Oh, um, uh, with, uh, you know what I'm talking about. I do know what you're talking about. Yeah. It feels like that because, uh, uh, Joan Crawford's character is in a wheelchair and is needs Betty Davis's character to take care of her. Betty Davis though, has this crazy makeup on and is dressing like a little girl from 1917. Uh, but she's 60, you know, or she's in like her, late, her mid to late fifties. Like they really have her like dressed up like really, really crazy. Um, and it, it's just such a really good movie. And all of the secondary actors that are in it, uh, they're all great. All the supporting actors, the whole thing is just really great and really well paced. And it's like, it's not a horror. It's more suspense. Yeah. Because there are like a couple different things of like what like Betty Davis's character is gaslighting Joan Crawford the entire time. And this movie is what feud is about. 
the whole thing that started us getting into wanting to do this series yeah. was what the movie, the um, the FX series feud is about. It really focuses just, it begins at them being like, we should do this movie together and leaves out all the shit running up to it. Yeah. Um, so that's also, why it's incredible. the movie was Misery with Kathy Bates. Misery, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. the movie I was thinking of. Because, yeah, she's being she's being held in a bed. Um, you know, the her only lifeline is this person. No, who, no, Kathy Bates. Oh, you mean... Joan okay, Crawford. Okay. I was like, Hattie Bates wasn't in the No. <laughs> no. Uh, Joan Crawford is being is bedridden and is in a wheelchair yeah. and all this different stuff. Also, there's like so many things during it where I'm like, well, that wouldn't happen today. I mean, yeah. it could, but it wouldn't. But like even the baseline of like, there's a whole thing with Joan Crawford being in a wheelchair, wanting to go down the steps. Yeah. And she's like, oh, she's... Uh, Betty Davis left. Baby Jane left to go buy alcohol or whatever. Yeah. And like... She, I'll, I'll I'll get down the steps. And it's like, well, today, like you would just be on. They would have built you a first floor bedroom. ADA compliant. ADA yeah, compliant. yeah. They, yeah. they would have gotten you the the Medicare uh, yeah, chair. Yeah, you had a caseworker who would have came in and advocated. That yeah, you and and, the, and there would be the chair the rail and all the chair lift and Medicaid all the different stuff. Medicaid would have paid for it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's all these different things, but like, also like every time she tried to report an issue, everybody's like, "What could possibly be going wrong?" Yeah, she's <laughs> like, like, "Is your sister also, violent?" Also, she kept not calling nine one one. Oh my god, <laughs> it was there were so me. many times. Well, first thing, nine one one didn't exist back yeah then. okay you had to actually call it directly to the police office yeah and you had to know that's the reason why they invented 911 yeah because you had to actually know the local police office's number mm. so if you were traveling like let's say you were in um i don't know uh atlantic city new jersey on august 2nd and okay. there was something in trouble you would have to know the atlantic city police department but not only that you would have to know the one that you were in the jurisdiction of yeah you so now you call 911 you get sent to a general operator dispatch and then they dispatch you to the local dispatch exactly they bring you down and they're like yeah this doesn't make sense mm -hmm. so you call a number so sometimes you know usually they try to at least get it within the state but sometimes you could be calling 911 and be, you could be in you know uh jersey city Mm -hmm. And be calling Philly, and then Philly routes you to the Jersey City dispatch. It happens from time to time. Um, but the so, movie is great; yeah, it's yeah. really good, and I highly recommend it. It's not on streaming anywhere. I had to rent it on uh, on on Apple. Yeah, and um, you liked it so much. You said, "Dress me up like one of your French girls." I said, "Dress me up like I'm hot to go." Yeah, you look like a pink pony girl for sure. I <laughs> I am going to do some lip syncs in the backyard to this. This um, is the makeup for it. Yeah, absolutely. Pink pony I, you're club. You're going to scare the shit out of Pearl Baby when we go downstairs. I, I am kind of terrified to do that. I'm honestly, I almost don't want to do it. Oh, no. Um, okay, so Betty Davis believed that she could appeal to the same audience that recently made Alfred Hitchcock Psycho an incredible success. So I think that's yeah. why they filmed it in black and white as well, is they're trying to get oh, that yeah, Hitchcock yeah. Uh, vibe. Yeah. Um, Betty Davis. And a lot of the horror movies are low budget. So yeah. a lot of them were in black and white. Exactly. Even though that so color this was available. Was definitely like people were side eyeing this whole project for sure. Yeah. They were like, what are these two old broads doing? Yeah. What's going on? And I think the producer, right? The producer was kind of, the producer director is kind of washed up. Yeah. He was a, wa everybody that was like, I don't want to say washed up, but everybody was kind of like. On their last legs. On their last legs. Yeah. And everybody, not a lot of people thought this movie was going to go anywhere. They thought it was going to be a bit of a laugh. Nobody a had faith. Nobody. Yeah. Um, I had faith. However, yeah. Betty Davis, back room, didn't tell Joan Crawford. No. Nope. She just did her own thing, right? Betty Davis negotiates a deal. That would pay her ten percent of the worldwide gross profits in addition to her salary. <laughs> so she didn't tell Joan Crawford she was doing this. Yeah, she just negotiated this deal anyway. And this film became one of the year's big, big ex biggest successes. Yeah. in film for sure. Yeah. Um, oh, that was the other thing too. Yeah, I forgot. The other thing too, I forgot that one of the big parts of the movie is that. Um, a Joan Crawford's character, right, was the famous Hollywood actress in yeah. the 40s, uh, or excuse me, in the 30s and 40s. Her movies are getting replayed on television, so she's getting paid for residuals for the movie. And I'm like, no, you wouldn't. No. That's a lie. Ronald Reagan fucked that up for y'all. Like, yeah. That's what I knew from the first episode when I was yeah. watching it. I'm like, she's not getting residuals like that. Well, when they filmed the movie, it was before Reagan fucked it up for them. Oh, that's right. It was, it was moving forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, because they were showing you. Yeah, because that was the whole thing is 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 her, uh, Joan Crawford's character in the movie is having a career resurgence yeah. because they're starting to show all of her old movies on TV. So it's getting a whole new audience. Yeah. And again, which is playing into this movie itself is being shown to a whole new audience yeah like from feud yeah um so blah, 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 feud took place okay so here's the thing this is how we all started was well alex and i started was we were watching feud um 
and I wanted to talk about the feud a little bit. They do cover it, obviously, in the TV series. Yeah. Certain things, like the fact that uh, Crawford was on Pepsi's board of directors because her late husband, Alfred Steele, was a Pepsi executive. Mm -hmm. So she was the Pepsi gal. She was all about Pepsi. She would show up places with a Pepsi in her hand. Every picture, she had a Pepsi. She was a brand ambassador. Brand ambassador. Affiliate links. So Davis had coca-cola machines installed in her dressing rooms and outside uh for all the staff and crew just to spite her like this is the little things they're doing to each other it's so funny um in the one scene in the movie where um uh betty davis's character is going to beat joan crawford's character like kick her and punch her uh, crawford requested a body double because she didn't trust that Betty Davis was not going to hurt her for real yeah. and kick the shit out of her. And she was reportedly proven right because there's a scene uh, where they had to do close-ups and they couldn't use a body double. And Davis hit her hard in the head. Some reports had claimed that it was hard enough to require stitches. Although Davis insisted that she, quote, barely touched her. It's wild, too, because I saw I knew that scene because they mm. talked about it in Feud. And uh, when she is, she's kicking her on the ground. And like, that's cut in a way that like, you know, Joan Crawford's like flailing on the ground. And they do the up, the Dutch angle shot looking upwards at uh, Betty Davis kicking. But there was like a scene where like she hits her. Yeah. And I was like, ooh. I was like, oh, that's, I've watched a lot of wrestling. Every now and then, like you can see something connect. And I was like, I think that, I think she got her on that one. There was a little bit of a, there was a, she she sold her a potato. And then there was the other thing where, there's a scene where um, Betty Davis's character has to pull Joan Crawford across the floor. You by her hair, right? By her hair. Yeah. And they had to do the scene multiple times, but Joan Crawford was wearing like a weighted chest belt and kept filling her pockets with rocks because it was known that Betty Davis had like back injuries and was like very out of shape for her age. Yeah. So it was like really debilitating and painful for her. And Betty Davis just kept, I'm not sorry, Joan Crawford just kept going dead weight and adding weight secretly to her body just so it kept hurting her and then ruining the take on purpose. So they had to do it over and over and over and over and again. Honestly, yeah. I love it. Yeah. It's fucking, that's amazing. Pulling the, the toddler move, <laughs> just going dead weight toddler. In the middle of the grocery and then store. filling your pockets with rocks. <laughs> oh, talk about childish. <laughs> the fucking, oh, uh, yeah. There's, it, it's so good. Um, so one of the things is that Betty Davis is getting really upset about uh, the media coverage around this. There are, yeah. People are calling her a diva. They're saying they're going to flop. Um, there's a lot of uh, media coverage about Joan Crawford and the feuding. Like, people are writing about it. And with what's actually happening on set... Betty Davis is getting, you know, upset and she wants to take a dig at Joan Crawford again. And she does it in the funniest way possible. She buys an advertisement in Variety magazine okay. in the help wanted section. Okay. Okay. And the heading of the uh, art advertisement, advertisement specifically says situations wanted woman artist, mother of three. 10, 11, and 15, divorcee, American, 30 years experience as an actress in motion pictures, mobile still, more affable than rumor would have it, once steady employment in Hollywood, has done Broadway. So like, you have to picture that she is on a job and she just posted that she's looking for work on LinkedIn with all of her bosses connected, right? Like this is crazy she's in the middle of filming and she's like i'm looking for a job i'm looking for work what what's crazy too is actually in the movie Mm -hmm. there's a scene where baby jane goes and places a classified ad in full makeup like that's the one thing that's crazy is like when i first heard about this i didn't think the character ever left the house yeah i thought it was like gray gardens yeah where there are two people who are just torturing each other in this mansion and like she's getting liquor delivered because at one point she even calls and like does like a whole liquor delivery thing but, like, she keeps leaving the house. Like, she keeps leaving the house in this crazy makeup and, like, her weird, like, 1917 baby frocks. Yeah. All this stuff. But there's a scene where she goes and actually gets a a, per- a one ad. Yeah. And so the fact that she's doing this while also acting it. Yeah. While also in her stage clothes. Yeah. She's so like, she's dressed leave- as this. Yeah. She it's left just- the set. Bought a one ad in variety of all things. Yeah. Just incredible. Yeah. Well, no, because you know what? There are people that just wander the world with like that would be the character Baby Jane. Yeah. Like no. I'll never forget. I, I think she passed away many years ago. There was a woman 
who uh, was in Rittenhouse Square and in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia. She was um, a local, yeah. and she lived in one of the very fancy condos. R- Rittenhouse Square is like the very rich area in Philly, and she would always come to our restaurant because I worked in Rittenhouse Square, and she had like this baby Jane makeup on. Yeah, like it was just maybe like a little bit more skin tone than white, and but she had that. And she had this crazy blonde long wig, and she would wear these very sixties twiggy dresses and flat shoes. Like it was like she was the hottest girl in the 60s and she just never let go of the look or the vibe yeah every day and she'd be wandering around the neighborhood and i talked to somebody one time because i was like what is the story with this lady and they were telling me that apparently she was like um a sugar baby in the 60s Mm. and her sugar daddy had bought her a condo and so she just lived this lavish lifestyle on the estate of this guy that was like taking care of her and she, I just, I was always like really interested in her. I wanted to always talk to her, but she was very shy and she wouldn't talk to anybody. So um, one thing I was thinking when I was watching the movie, there's a scene where baby Jane is, uh, she's like singing a little song to herself in the mirror and she's like looking at herself and then she takes a step forward and like the light hits her and she sees like all of her wrinkles and yeah. everything, the way the lighting changes. And I was just like... When a Gen X TikToker takes off the filter by accident. No! It, it was so rise up. We heard Gen Z is speaking down about us. Oh, they got we got to rise up against the Gen. You've awoken a beast of the uh, Gen X. Yeah, okay. Um, but sure, yeah, sure. It very, much, it very much felt like, oh, they for, they forgot to hit the bold, the bold the, glamour It's got to be bold glamour, baby. you got to hit bold glamour. Fight me without bold glamour on. Yeah. But there was a lot of different scenes like that, like during it, and like uh, some of the, the subtext and things where I was like, huh. Huh. We're still going through this, huh? Yep. Nothing ever changes. Part of the human condition. So um, they had released statements to the press. You know, P- Davis, or I'm sorry, Crawford would say that Betty Davis is a fascinating actress. Mm-hmm. Not a good one. <laughs> Not a great one. A fascinating one. Fascinating. Davis would say to the press about Crawford, she's a good professional actress. Professional. Mm. You know, she's good at being professional. Yeah. So like they're subtly in the press digging each she's other. She's a worker. She's a worker. Yeah. So Betty Davis receives an Oscar nomination for best actress for her performance in the film. Whatever happened to baby Jane? Mm. Joan Crawford did not. Mm. Um, to be fair, mm-hmm. after watching the film. Yeah. Of the two of them that Betty, <laughs> Joan Crawford didn't deserve one for yeah. it. Like, Betty Davis is most of the movie. Most of the movie is watching Betty Davis be insane. Yeah. And then they cut to Joan Crawford, who is sitting in a chair in a room going, help. <laughs> like, there's a point where they have a neighbor. There's this nosy neighbor that lives next door. And she's super nosy, always asking, like, hey, uh, baby Jane, where's your sister? She's upstairs. She's sleeping. Go away. Like, that's it. And at one point, she's outside. The nosy neighbor is outside cutting flowers. And Joan Crawford's character like climbs up the bars. Yeah. They have like barred windows and stuff because it's LA. And she's like, help me. Help. And I'm like, bitch, just yell, help. Scream. Yeah. Throw something. Throw Scream. a rock. Oh my God. This is how, like, this is insane. But it was, it, was, it, was, it was one of those funny ones too, like the way it's set up of like, it's clear that like her character didn't want to be embarrassed by it all. Yeah. And was like, I want to keep it quiet. But you know, oh, help me. Help me, help me. Um, so... She gets this Oscar nomination, and yeah. this nomination would, uh, uh, I'm not saying it would, but it could have solidified her as an incredible Hollywood icon. She already is solidified, so like, whatever. Yeah. But this would have meant that she was the first actress ever to score three Oscars if she wins. If she wins it, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, campaign, uh, Craw- Joan Crawford campaigned against Betty Davis, quietly and not quietly. Yeah. So like, she called everybody. She called all the press. She called every friend. She called every director, every producer, everybody that would listen. Yeah. She talked shit. She said she doesn't deserve it. Ba 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 ba. And one of the things she did while she was on her campaign of hate against Betty Davis, which again she asked her to be in the movie. <laughs> yeah. You, didn't, you could have made it with anyone else. You could have. You you knew what you were bringing in. Yeah. Okay. Um. There's this other actress who's a young lady named Anne Bancroft. She was also nominated for best actress in, in that category. And Be- uh, Joan Crawford convinced her to allow her to accept 
uh, Anne Bancroft's award if she won. So Joan Crawford would accept the award on Bancroft's on behalf. behalf. On Anne Bancroft. Gotcha. Yeah. So she was like, listen, you don't need to come all the way to LA. You live in New York. It's so far. I'm already here. Let me. I'll yeah. just go for you. Yeah. Why fly all the way out here if you don't win? You're just a yeah. waste of a ticket. Oh, my God. And also. And everyone knows how bad flying is. And <laughs> I also know every producer, director, everyone. And if you want to work in this town, you're going to need to do what I say. Oh, right? shit. Oh. She didn't say that, but it's implied <laughs> yeah. in the way she was behaving, right? Yeah. So we don't know exactly what the conversation was said, but Anne Bancroft was like, whatever you want, Joan Crawford. Yeah. And so she let Joan Crawford accept. If she wins, if Anne Bancroft wins for her role, uh, Joan Crawford is going to accept on her behalf, right? Yeah. So Davis also uh, received a BAFTA nomination for this performance. Oh. Just so you know. Um, and... And this movie was huge. I just yeah. want, I want to repeat to everybody, this movie is huge at the time. Yeah. Oh, incredibly huge. So, um, Anne Bancroft does win and Betty Davis doesn't win. Yeah. So Joan Crawford gets to cross the stage and accept the Oscar. Yeah. And in the, in the show, yeah. it's incredible. It is done in such a way. I think it was like a one shot too, yeah. where they follow Joan Crawford from going from one spot because like she like surprises everyone by walking out to things on behalf of Anne Bancroft. Thank you. Yeah. And then like, then poses with the Oscar while Betty Davis is like crying in a corner. No, it's, uh, she was, I think she was smoking a cigarette. In well, a I think she was smoking a cigarette. And <laughs> I don't know she, if she cried. Well, she's, she's drinking a shit ton of vodka. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, yeah. When in Rome. That was the other scene too. Oh my God. There's so many good scenes. I know. There's one where they she opens up a cabinet as baby Jane and it's just full of empty bottles. <laughs> it's just full. It's just so good. Um, Betty Davis's daughter, BD, played a small role in the film. Yes. Right? And when she and Davis uh, fit, uh, f- went to Cannes Film Festival to promote the film, BD met a man uh, named Jeremy Hyman. And he was 30 years old. Mm-hmm. Guess how old BD was? 16. Mm. And he was an executive for Seven Arts Production. And after a short courtship, she married uh, Jeremy Hyman at the age of 16 with Betty Davis's permission. She had to get a permission slip. And uh, Betty Davis wasn't happy about it. No. But why she... would you be? You had to get a permission slip? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gross. I know. This is, oh. Uh, yeah, yeah so... I remember that happening in the show, but <laughs> yeah. I forgot about it. Yeah, I'm sorry to bring it up. He was 30? Yeah, he was 30. And what she was he, Cody Co? Okay. What? But I don't, oh man. What? <laughs> now you got to explain Tana Mojo. I don't want to explain Tana Mojo. Yeah, you got to do a seven part episode on Tana Mojo. Oh, wait, just you to hear exp- about TanaCon. You're going to love this. <laughs> A convention of Tana? I, uh, yeah, I I did remember that her daughter was in the movie. Yeah. Because she has a very, very small role. It's yeah. so small. Yeah. And it's at the very beginning, and it's almost unnoticeable. She is the neighbor's daughter who is watching the Blanche Hudson movie. Mm-hmm. When the When the nosy neighbor comes home, yeah. the daughter is watching the movie. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, come on. I'm trying to watch the movie because it cuts to commercial. Yeah. And then they like quick, they quickly talk about like, oh, yeah, we've only been living next door for six months and I've never seen her. That's it. That's like her, like her two lines. Yeah. And are they flat? Yeah, they're flat. They're not delivered great. <laughs> I will say it isn't everyone. It's no, not. Betty. I, I need you to understand. Everyone else in this movie is fucking incredible. Yeah. Down to the fucking, the the, the housekeeper, mm-hmm. even the cops, the random dude who's serving the ice, ice cream, cream guy. The ice cream guy is like, <laughs> cops, what are you going to do? Like he legit, <laughs> and the way he delivers it, he's like, yeah, that dude knows cops ain't shit. All right. Yeah. The ice cream man said a cab with his eyes. Okay. It's fucking <laughs> wild. But the, the, her, the daughter is just kind of like. Yes, we haven't seen Blanche Hudson, and we have been living here for six months. And you're like, <laughs> AI daughter, yeah, <laughs> AI daughter, yeah. It was one Chachi of those, daughter. And they make a big deal about it in Feud about like how bad, like, but they made it sound like she sucked. It was one yeah. of those things where like, one, when I was looking for, her, I yeah. was like, where's the daughter? And then the daughter showed up. I was like, mm, yeah, that might have been mm, right. Okay, it might have been right. Listen, she didn't have a future in it, Listen, but it was fine. It was good enough. It got her through the two lines. So. We're before we get into the seventies and eighties, the final portion of Betty Davis's life. Yeah, the icon, yeah. the legend. Um, I think we should maybe just wrap it up because it's a lot. It is a lot. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And we we've been we've been here a while. And we need to wash your face. 
I don't know how that's going to come off. <laughs> I it, it's like is it is it <laughs> Baby Jane or is this a House of a Thousand Corpses? Like, I don't. Right? Oh yeah, the you, Rob Zombie movie or the yeah that Rob Zombie movie or the guy from Moulin Rouge, the the ringmaster guy from Moulin Rouge. What if I just leave this on uh, all the way through San Diego? What if I go to the airport like this? I think that's a good idea. Well, now they have those face scanning things. I don't know if it would work. Well, you couldn't even open your phone app. Like, no, I know. I so. tried to I tried to open my phone. It was like, yeah, you can't do face scan. Yeah, you're not going to work. This was enough to break the AI in my phone. Well, I think AI is trash. So listen, yeah. when we come back, we're going to talk about her later career and her daughter. Yeah. And, and uh, the- some wild shit she did while she got, you know, while she was uh, aging yeah. gracefully. We'll talk about the end. It'll be the end of Betty Davis. Yeah. yeah. Part three. Not in my heart, though. She no. lives on in my heart. No. In your heart, she lives on forever. But this will be, this was, this was the Crawford Strikes Back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Of the middle of the trilogy, yeah, um, and it was great. And uh, we are all going- I'm gonna say is that in the the next part, yeah. right? She gets real into writing books and talking shit on on, uh, on TV late shows. Night. On yeah, late night. she goes on the Tonight Show a lot. All right, so she likes to talk shit. With that, we are going to thank all of our Patreons. Mm-hmm. Maybe throw in a little bit extra lore about ourselves and talk about some other things. <laughs> Uh, like, so we're, if we're you wild. want to support us, you can go to patreon.com slash Pearlmania 500. Stick around. We'll be right back. Pearlmania, 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 Pearlmania. 500.net. Dot net. Dot net, net, net. That's where you can join us, as we've been saying throughout the entire show. And we're very excited this evening uh, because we have a lot of new patrons who are joining us uh, along with our friends at Factor. Oh, Uh, right. Yeah, you can check that. We've got a lot of friends. Check that link down there at the bottom. So with that, let's go ahead and welcome some new people. We're going to start off with Tyler Cullens. Hey, hon. After that, we have Dom with two M's. (laughs) Hey, hon. After that, we have that underscore weird underscore pregnant underscore Texas underscore teacher. Wait, what? Hey, hon. You weren't there. <laughs> okay. When I was in Austin, Texas, there was a couple that was sitting up front. Yeah. Um, the, the I guess, husband. I don't know. I'm not going to assume marriage. But the the soon-to-be father was wearing Phillies gear. Yeah. And uh, this weird pregnant te- Texas teacher was being pregnant in the front row. Okay. And when I was doing the bits, like talking about the birth of the baby and all that different stuff, like I pointed out, I went, ooh, sorry, spoilers. <laughs> um, so yeah, they were great and they came over and we did the photo line after the show. Amazing. And they said hi and everything else. So we just want to thank you guys so much for everybody who came out to the show. Uh, we really enjoy uh, everybody who came out. And I'm, I'm hoping to see more people soon. Uh, after that, we have Ghosty. Hey, hon. Ghosty's pretty good. That's up your... That's up your alley. Spooky Ookies. Yeah. After that, we have the underscore Corgi underscore always underscore knows 0.0. Wait, what? The Corgi always knows? Yeah. And I think the 0. Point, I think it's supposed to be like a Corgi ears and little nose. Oh, what? with their little butts. Yeah. That's a little butt. Very low to the ground. After that, we have Chekhov's underscore Gunnalingus. Well, you have no one to blame for that but yourself. Yeah, I think I made up that one. You did. I? That yeah. was from the, the yeah. second book. Yeah, yeah. It's funny because there's so many jokes like that where people will get them and then yeah. they're like, oh my God, this joke. And I'm like, oh man, I've, I've lived so much. Since <laughs> <laughs> um, please, thank you for reminding yeah. me. I thank you for it. reminding us the, the things we say. Yeah. Uh, after that, we have N. Butler. N. Butler. Yep. Hey, hon. After that, we have Nate Pruitt. Hey, Nate. How you doing? After that, we have Stephanie is also a nerd. Okay, Stephanie. Uh, Yeah, girl. Okay. After that, we have James Gill. Hey, hon. <laughs> it's just after everything. James Gill. He sounds like a great dude. I like Gill. Yeah. Hey, James. I like dill. You like dill? One of my favorite herbs. All right. Just top tier herb right there, dill. Okay. This next one? Okay. I want to go pre-apologize. Oh, no. I'm going to try. Bella... Schweitert. Schweitert? Sure. Tell me what you think. Hold oh, on. No. Let me highlight. I'm oh. going to highlight it. You tell me how you would pronounce that. Oh, that's not. Okay. Schweitert. 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 I think maybe she made that up. No. Just to try to take us I out. don't think she did. I don't think she did. I Because here's the one thing is with all these, I always get the email on the side and oftentimes they line up. Oh, I feel like know. people don't would go. People wouldn't make up a fake email. That's a lot. Along with a fake Patreon name, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's too much. After that, though, mm-hmm. guess what we have? What? Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. And after that, we have Jackson. Hey, Jackson. And after that, we have Gina Catalano. 
Jordan Catalano? Gina. Jordan Catalano? It says Gina. Jordan? Okay. Catalano. Did I get it wrong? Do you not know who that is? No. Holy shit. Who am I Did supposed to know? Did you not watch my so-called life? No. That's crazy. Hey, Gina. Hey, hun. Hey. What am I missing here? What are you? Mi- you're missing Claire Danes. You're missing okay. Jared Leto. Okay. This is this is nuts. I didn't know you never saw that show. I never watched that show. I don't like wow. Jared Leto. I really hate Jared okay, Leto. Okay, we all hated Jared Leto now. Yeah, but, but I, I hated him. Then, no, I hated him back then. Okay. Well, I've you never liked him. You're supposed to hate the character back then. No, 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 I've never liked the person. I don't like <sighs> his, I don't trust his eyes. He says, covered in eyeliner. Uh, after that, uh, we have Halissa Curry. Hey, hon. And finally, uh, this is somebody who we had last week, uh, but we didn't have the correct name for them, and I'm glad they messaged us back. Uh, a big shout out to... The underscore way underscore Mrs. P underscore says underscore okay underscore when underscore Mr. P underscore goes underscore off underscore the rails. <laughs> it is a very specific type of okay. You know what's funny that I we don't need to talk about now, but I really want to is like the whole joke about our team leads and all this stuff is yeah. all born out of the MLM stuff yeah. we've talked about in the past. Yeah. And there's like uh, earthquake shattering news in the MLM community. Yeah. And I am, I'm watching it with all, my eyes boring into it because I want to see how it plays out before I really start talking about it. Yeah. But I'm going to give you a little, a little taste. Give me a little baseline. Okay. baseline. Here's what's going on. The FTC recently passed some new guidelines and there's been new lawsuits from the FTC. Yep. About the Federal how, Trade Commission. The Federal Trade Commission about how MLMs are allowed to work within the, the global market, right? And in America. So basically, all of these companies that are the doTERRAs, that are the Monats, that are the whatever, all of them, they're starting to uh, realign how they uh, have their uh, employees, in quotes, because they're not employees, their employees work, and so that it's no longer going to be uh, having, they're not going to make profit out of the downline anymore. They're all going to be affiliates, and they're going to have to use affiliate links. <laughs> Welcome to hell, y'all. Yeah. So they'll no longer make any percentage of people that are in their downline. They're going to have to get people to click through to purchase products so that they will only make profit off of purchase product, not the way they used to make profit off of other people buying products from the people further below them on the, I'm not going to say pyramid, cell. but a triangle shaped thing yeah. of people. And so the gals, the gals with the, the big hats and the the wellness gurus. And the little stars emojis and oh, all of their bios. The hey huns, the hey huns, the literal hey huns. Yeah. They're losing it on the internet. Yeah. They're crying, screaming, throwing up. They don't know what to do. And I'm watching it, holding my breath. Yeah. Because I am living for how this is going to play out man that's so incredible (laughs) that's so incredible that they now have to be uh trying to get it through affiliate links yeah but they're let's get it's how don't look into our bio on this week's episode (laughs) no do uh and use that promo code i we worked really hard we really did and we ate delicious meals (laughs) we've tried and had delicious mint lemonade this has been such a long time coming (laughs) so we're very excited to i think everyone knows that we're very excited we are about having uh factor factor yeah like obviously they know we're excited yeah no it's been good and uh and they also i've seen other people that they partner with and stuff like that in the past so it's it's been a good it's been a good fit uh so with that this has been our episode we did yeah we did it we actually recorded it i don't know how we don't know how we did this it has been thank you so much for listening i cannot thank you for being a patreon thank you for even if you're not a patreon thank you so much for listening oh my god we love doing this. We were so stressed out all week because we didn't have electric, which means we didn't have a computer, which means we didn't have microphones or lights or air conditioning for this room. And we've been in a panic yeah. for 72 straight hours about how we were going to record this episode before he left for San Diego. And it's happening and we did it. And we're so grateful that people want to listen. Give me a high five. Okay. Nice. That's a high five. That was a good high five. Thank you guys for everyone out there. Uh, have yourself a great week. And I hope uh, the makeup was worth it for those of you who watched on <laughs> YouTube. Uh, and then for those of you who are just, uh, you know, just a little curious, uh, you can always go check it out over, uh, follow all those links and you can find all the different stuff down there in the show notes. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you guys next week for part three. Yep. BD strikes. No, no. Uh, return of the BD. <laughs> Too many frauds and too many scammers that we wish weren't real. 
Too many cons and too many spammers And we're starting to feel like we've got Too many tabs open It's too many tabs Remember to smile.